You take it before bed, you sleep like a baby, you might be uh, getting some wild dreams because your growth hormone levels are going to be super physiological. Towards the morning, your cortisol levels start to go up. Vigorous Steve here. So you want to run some ibutamorin, MK677, to increase your endogenous growth hormone levels and IGF-1 levels downstream, increase your appetite by super physiological amounts to make those sweet, sweet gains during the next off-season. And you've done a whole five minutes of research realizing that MK677 can cause some serious insulin resistance, the loss of insulin sensitivity, the longer you use it. But you still want to use it because you don't have access to pharmaceutical growth hormone or reliable generic GH. You also don't really want to inject. You're just looking for an edge to increase your natural hypodermic pituitary testes axis, even though there's plenty of scientific evidence that shows that MK677 does have a negative effect on your HPTA. I'll link it down below, but I'm sympathetic to the cause. I completely understand if this is going to be your gateway drug into the use of performance enhancing drugs, full-blown steroid cycles, so be it since I'm cursed with knowledge, I'm going to teach you exactly how to use MK677 without the potential of developing full-blown insulin resistance, turning yourself into the Michelin man. But before we do, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by joining either the YouTube or Patreon memberships, where you can vote for upcoming deep dives, or join the weekly Vigorous Q&A, which is always on Saturday, where you can ask questions for an entire hour before we go public. And it turns into a super chat, super flood. First things first, let me briefly explain how ibutamorin MK677 actually works. It's a ghrelin receptor agonist in combination with the growth hormone releasing hormone receptor agonist will tell the pituitary to secrete a super physiological amount of growth hormone for the time that it's active. And MK677 has a very long active life. So throughout the entire day, you get increased growth hormone secretion and downstream increased IGF-1 secretion, assuming that your liver is in a good state of health. Now, in the same class of uh, drugs, the ghrelin receptor agonists fall a growth hormone releasing peptide 2 and growth hormone releasing peptide 6, hexarelin, ipromorelin. And in the other class of drugs, the growth hormone releasing hormone receptor agonists fall a CJC1295 without the drug affinity complex or with. DAC, somatorelin, sermorelin, and tesamorelin. Unfortunately, all of the other ones, besides ibutomorin, you're going to have to inject. There's no oral version of either of these GHRH or ghrelin receptor agonists available. So again, if you don't want to inject, ibutomorin is your sole option to increase your growth hormone levels. Somatostatin, which is released from the intestinal tract in response to eating, will blunt the growth hormone secreting effect that ibutamorin and the, all of the other growth hormone secreted gogs have. So this is a little bit problematic because ghrelin is the hunger hormone and ibutamorin makes you mad hungry. So you start to eat and now your intestinal tract will release a hormone to blunt further growth hormone secretion. Now you can follow intermittent fasting. So you have an eight hour feeding window, which is also good for insulin sensitivity during the 16 hours that you're not eating, insulin sensitivity goes up. The reason why ibutamorin MK677 reduces insulin sensitivity, causing full-blown insulin resistance, is because growth hormone levels are chronically elevated, and growth hormone liberates free-form fatty acids from adipose tissue. Free-form fatty acids directly inhibit insulin receptor substrate 1, which otherwise responds to insulin, whether that's endogenously produced in the pancreas or administered exogenously. Insulin receptor substrate 1 instructs or translocates the glucose type 4 receptors to the cell membrane and thus glucose and other nutrients can enter the cell, not floating around in the bloodstream, raising serum glucose concentrations to uh, pre-diabetic levels, right? So we're trying to prevent this. So long story short, you take your MK677 before bed in a fasted state. The last meal of the day, you have low glycemic index foods like potatoes, for example, mixed with a little bit moderate fatty steak or salmon and some vegetables to lower the glycemic loads of your potatoes even further. The free-form fatty acids, which are now being liberated from this increased growth hormone level that is no longer inhibited by somatostatin, because again, you're going to bed in a fasted state. Somatostatin levels are quite low and thus you get the highest amount of growth hormone secretion possible from this ibutamorin dose pre-bed. Growth hormone levels go up. 
you don't have a negative feedback on your insulin sensitivity because the glycemic load of the potatoes mixed with a fatty protein sources and vegetables is keeping that sustained throughout the night. Potentially, you take something to help with fatty acid absorption, like carnitine, for example. If you don't want to inject your carnitine, you can take oral L-carnitine L-tartrate throughout the day, or at least one serving of 500 milligrams before bed, even though you need a slight insulin release for you, for your skeletal muscle, to properly absorb the L-carnitine. So why don't we save the oral L-carnitine for over the day? Let's focus a little bit on this nighttime MEK677 administration. You take it before bed, you sleep like a baby, you might be uh, getting some wild dreams because your growth hormone levels are going to be super physiological. Towards the morning, your cortisol levels start to go up and thus your liver starts to release some of the glycogen to raise uh, glucose levels in the bloodstream. And now you start to lose a little bit of your insulin sensitivity because even though throughout the night, your glucose levels were nice and low, glucose homeostasis was sustained and you have a little bit of a method in place to discard the free-form fatty acids which are being liberated overnight. In the morning, you might still wake up with elevated glucose levels. It might be a temporary state because cortisol levels are going up. The liver is releasing glycogen from the liver through glycogenolysis, and thus serum glucose levels are going up in order for you to wake up. Thus, it might be beneficial to have a continuous glucose monitor which monitors your glucose levels throughout the night. If you see that in the morning, just before waking up, your glucose levels start to go up, that's because of cortisol. You don't have to change your diet. All you need to do is some fast cardio. Yes, your insulin sensitivity will return right away. Now, that still means that you're going to have to pin something, right? Either through daily glucose measurements upon waking or using a continuous glucose monitor. Because if you notice over longitudinal data that your fasting glucose levels are going up and fasted cardio is not able to resolve that, then it's time to discontinue the MK677. That could be months, that could be as little as a couple of days, right? It highly depends on your diet and which over-the-counter supplements you take to improve your insulin sensitivity throughout the day. So as a regular timeline, you take your MK677 before bed in a fasted state, you wait the entire night, check your fasting glucose levels upon waking, do some daily fasted cardio for 30 minutes, Give or take moderate intensity, check your glucose levels again to confirm that your glucose levels went down during your fasted cardio session. And then you start reintroducing the food as part of your intermittent fasting protocol with an eating window of, let's say, eight hours. Now, if you want to make some serious gains, you might have to eat 16 hours versus eight hours of no eating, sleeping. But that means that somatostatin might be chronically elevated and the maximum amount of growth hormone release will not occur unless you use something like tessamorelin alongside your ibutamorin, right? So you're going to have to make some sacrifices. You might still need to inject something, but if you're solely going with an oral MK677, you're still going to have to pin to, to check your blood glucose levels. Unfortunately, right? There's no way around it. You're going to have to um, pierce the skin in one way or another. And if you're smart, you check your glucose levels in between meals as well. If you have a Dexcom, that is highly, highly beneficial to monitor your glucose levels. 